Journey into space. The BBC presents Jet Morgan in Operation Luna. After spending one lunar day on the moon, Jet Morgan and his crew prepared to make their long journey back to Earth. But when the time came to take off, nothing in the ship would function. All efforts to find the reason for the ship's failure were fruitless, and the four men spent the lunar night, equivalent to 14 Earth days, within the ship, waiting and hoping. On the tenth day, strange tapping sounds were heard outside the ship as though somebody or something were inspecting it. Then, just as the sun was rising on the lunar horizon, the power unaccountably returned and the ship sprang to life. Once more, preparations for takeoff were made and radio contact with the Earth was attempted. Then, in the televiewer screen, appeared the image of a strange object. Good heavens! Is that the thing Lemmy saw during the guessing game? Is it Lemmy? Is it? Well, you should know. You said you saw it yourself. You all did. Yes, but not like this, with the rising sun lighting up every detail. We only caught a glimpse of it. That's when it arrived. It, it's been sitting out there ever since. You mean it landed here? Well, what else are we to think? Then who is it? What is it? Must be H.G. Wells's lot. There's only one way to find out. We'll go out there. Hey? No, but we can't. It, it's time for us to leave. We can't spare the oxygen. We've got a couple of hours yet. But you don't know what that thing is or, or what it can do to the us. The very reason I want to go. This is the biggest thing we've seen since we landed here. We can't pull out on it now. But, Jet, you... You're willing to you... come with me, Mitch? Yes, Jet. I'm all for it. Then get the suits, Lemmy. We're going out. Now, wait a minute, Jet. Think what you're doing. Eh? None of us know what that thing is out there. That's just why we're going outside, to find out. It's too risky. We ought to take off while we've got the chance. If you get stuck out there or get lost or something, it might be ours before we find you again. We have no intention of getting lost. Come on, Jet. But if you should, for any reason, it'll ruin any chance we've got of getting back to Earth before our oxygen supply runs out. We have more than 12 hours before we need worry about that. Meanwhile, that thing's sitting out there, just waiting for us. We can't pass up a chance like this. Look, there'll be another time. We'll be back. But that, whatever it is, may not be. We should photograph it at least. There can't be any danger in that. Oh, all right, Jet. If you're quite sure you know what you're doing, get your suits on. I'll open the hatch. Thanks. Uh, and Lemmy. Yeah? Keep working on that radio. Try to raise Earth if you can. Tell them what we've seen and what we're doing. Right. Now, if you wouldn't mind handing me the camera, Doc, we'll go down. Okay, here you are. Thank you. Okay, Mitch, right. you first. Now, keep us on the televiewer, Doc, and keep the recorder going. Take down every word we say. Right. And don't worry, we'll keep our distance. We'll just take a good look at it, take a few pictures, and be right back. Hello, Earth. Hello, Earth. Rocket ship Luna calling Earth. Okay, Doc, close the hatch. Hatch closing. Not a peep. Oh, I suppose they still use radio back on Earth. Fastening helmets. Over to intercom. Stand by to exhaust airlock. Exhausting airlock. Hello. Hello, Earth. This is rocket ship Luna calling Earth. Suit now inflating. Calling Wongawala, Australia. Emergency. Matter of life and death. Oh, uh, emergency. Now listening out. Air pressure zero. Come in, please. Hello, Luna. Hello, Luna. Receiving you loud and clear. Hey, Doc, listen. We got something. What? Who are you, please? This is weather station XLG, stationed in Greenland. Picked up your call a few moments ago. Who did you say you were? Rocket ship Luna, commanded by Jet Morgan. Rocket ship Luna. Who is it, Lemmy? Is it base? Rocket ship Luna, a spaceship. And we thought all hope for you had been abandoned. It will be, unless somebody does something about us and quit. Lemmy, who is it? Let's get out there, Jet. Lemmy can handle the radio. Open the door, Doc. Main door opening. Where are you, Luna? Where do you think we are? On the moon, of course. Been stuck up here a fortnight, Earth time, and unable to communicate due to power failure. Can you help us? Anything you say. We're in constant contact with the Met Office in London. We'll relay our messages to them. Good. Tell them we're trying to contact the rocket launching ground at Wangawalla, Australia. Ask London to raise them and tell them to communicate with us. It's urgent. Very urgent. Crater and um, object in full view. Can you see it, Jet? How does it look? Exactly the same as on the screen. It appears to be circular, about 40 feet in diameter and 10 feet high. The general shape is rather like a donut, but with a, a dome-like roof. Mitch is now taking pictures of it. You getting this, Doc? Yeah, every word. Sounds just like the thing I saw. 
It appears to be made of metal. The sides are very smooth with no visible seams or doors, but something like portholes or windows are at the base of the dome. It lies at the bottom of the crater. There's no sign of movement either near it or within it that we can tell from here. Jack? We're now going out, Doc, for a closer look. Watch your step. We will. Jet, this is the biggest thing that could have happened to us. This must mean that there is life in other parts of the universe. Now, don't let's go jumping to any hasty conclusion. How else could a thing like that appear from nowhere? Shall I go first? Yes, but wait at the bottom of the ladder. Now, don't attempt to approach the thing alone. Hello? Hello, rocket ship Luna. Weather station XLG calling rocket ship Luna. Over. Hello, XLG. Luna calling. Have passed your message to London, who are now contacting Wonga Walla. Keep listening out. You can expect to hear from them very shortly. Are you all safe? Jet and Mitchell and Doc Matthews? Yes, we are. We haven't all the oxygen left we'd have liked, but we've just about enough to get home. Glad to hear it. I suppose you'll be taking off any minute. Well, yes, except that Jet and Mitch have left the ship. We can't take off till they get back. Left the ship? What for? Oh, there's a thing out there. They've got to look at it and take a picture of it. What sort of a thing? Looks like another spaceship. It landed here during the night. You sure it's not the man in the moon dropping in for a cup of tea? Don't you believe me? Well, at least you're in good spirits up there. Joking at a time like this. Oh, I'm not joking. Well, if you say so. Now, you better listen out for Wonga Walla. We should be calling you soon. And good luck. Hello, Doc. Jet calling. Receiving you. Go ahead. We've touched down on the moon's surface and we're walking towards the crater. Let us know when we're in camera range. OK. Doc, did you hear that? Them fellas down in Greenland don't believe us. Hardly expected them to. I can hardly believe it myself. Hello, Luna. Hello, rocket ship Luna. Control calling. Calling from Wonga Walla launching ground. Can you hear me? Come in, please. Control. It's Control. Did you hear that, Doc? We got them. Hello, Control. Hello, let me call in. Lemmy Barnett calling from the moon. Where you been all this time? Where have you been? What happened? Why didn't you take off? We couldn't. The old ship packed in. We couldn't get a peep out of her. We've been stuck up here ever since. But we're all right now. Thank goodness for that. You're more than a week overdue. We've given you up as lost. Well, we're not. We're all here, large as life, and can't wait to get home. How soon do you expect to take off? Just as soon as Jet and Mitch get back. Get back? Where are they? They're outside. Outside, looking at the, uh, 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 oh, oh, blimey. Hello, Earth, hello, hello, Earth. Lemmy, the ship, the thing. Hello, Earth, come in, please. I've lost contact. Hurry, for Pete's sake, come over here. Look, Doc, Doc, oh, I'm here. Doc, that noise. Look at the screen. Look at the Look. dome on that thing. It's moving. Hey? Moving slowly. Look, it's opening. The top is opening. There must be something in there. Can Jet see it? Jet! Hello, Jet. Hello, can you hear me? Jet! Mitch, this is Doc. Can you hear me? Don't move. Stay where you are. Stay where you are. Oh, it stopped. Jet! Oh. Mitch! Hello, Doc. This is Jet. Come in, please. Hello, Jet. Hearing you. We've been calling you. Didn't you hear us? It was that music. Came on again and we couldn't hear anything as usual. I lost contact with home, too. Doc, the dome of the ship, or whatever it is, has slid back. It's open. Yeah, we know. We saw it. Come back into the ship, Jet. Come back. What do you think, Mitch? You can go back if you want to. I'm not going. Not yet, I'm not. Oh, Mitch, where's your common sense? Jet, bring him back. Come on, Mitch. I'm not going back. But, Mitch, we... You're not afraid, are you? No, I'm not. But if there is anything in there, something hostile, how do we defend ourselves? We've no weapons, nothing. Oh, even if we had, they probably wouldn't be any good against... Uh, whatever it is. All the more reason for caution. You're just scared. Uh, you have no right to say that, Mitch. I've got every right to say what I darn well please. Mitch, if anything should happen to us, what about Lemmy and Doc? How do they get home? I'm going on. I'm going right up to that thing. If nothing comes out, I'm going to take a look inside. Oh, no, you're not. It's too risky. Who's going to stop me? I am. I'd like to see you try. Go on. Mitch, pull yourself together. I'm going. Mitch, come here. Leave me alone. I won't come here. Jet, Jet, don't fight. The suits, you'll damage them. You hear that, Jet? If you use force, you might kill us both. <laughs> That's better. Fighting won't get anybody anywhere. Mitch, what's got into you? It shouldn't be hard to figure out. For years, I've worked on our ship, sweating my inside out, designing her and building her. And then, when we get here, here's another one, completely different in design. Probably holding a whole lot of secrets about long-distance space travel. And you want me to bypass it. 
go back into our ship and go home without so much as taking a close look at this one. We've photographed it, haven't we? Photographs? What can they tell us? We might just as well have photographed the image on the televiewer screen. Mitch, what exactly do you want to do? I want to go up to that thing, touch it, walk all around it, examine it. But the top has just opened. Something must have opened it, and that something may come out. I'm prepared to risk it. Do you want to come with me? I... Yes, I do. Jet, wait. Jet, do as Doc says, please. Mitch, I'll come as far as the crater's rim. If you want to go down it, you go, but don't get out of my sight. All right. If that's what you want, I'll do it. It'll be better than nothing. Did you hear that, Doc? Yes. Then we'll start walking towards it. Uh, slowly, Mitch, take your time. Hello, Luna. Hello, control calling. Have lost contact. If you can hear me, come in, please. Hello, control. Luna calling. Sorry for the interruption, but that music came on again. Music? What music? Whoa, dear. Oh, well, the fact is Jet and Mitch are still outside the ship and we can't get them back in. Outside? What's the matter with them? Don't they know you must take off as soon as possible? Yes, they know, but there's something out there. Mitch won't leave it alone. What is it? It's, um, well, we're not sure. Now approaching Crater Rim, Doc. Can see you. What do you mean, you're not sure? Well, we're not. That's why Jet and Mitch have gone out. Now on Crater's Rim. Lemme, shut up. I can't hear what Jet's saying. And come over here and handle the recorder. I can't watch it and the televiewer. Hello, Earth. Look, there's a bit of a panic on up here. I'll call you again in a few minutes. All right, but don't leave it too long. Blimey, Doc. Why does everything have to happen at once? And why can't they leave that thing out there alone and let us get home? Shh, Lemmy. Mitch well, is going down into the crater now. Hello, Jet. Everything all right? Up to now it is. How about you, Mitch? I'm not dead yet. Just walking across the crater floor. Nothing's come out of that thing. I suppose there is somebody or something in it. Uh, how should I know? Keep your mind on that recorder. He's getting close, Doc. Yeah, I can see him. All right, Mitch? Of course I'm all right. Now only a few yards off. Hmm. I'm right up to her. Seems to be made of metal, all right. What kind of metal? I wouldn't like to say. A kind of aluminium, at a rough guess. <laughs> Darn solid, too. Hey, Mitch, do that again. Do what? Kick it. Like that? Yes, I heard it. What? I heard it. I heard your kick. Impossible. You can't hear any noise up here. There's no atmosphere for the sound waves to travel in. Oh, I didn't hear it direct. I heard it through my radio. What? Doc, Lemmy, did you hear it? Yeah, just as you did. Do it again, Mitch. I heard it myself that time. First, I thought it must be the vibrations within my suit, but it definitely came through the radio. But how could it? There's only one explanation. Either that thing itself or something inside it is a radio, a transmitter. It transmitted Mitch's kicks and our sets picked them up. And yet, I, I want to walk around this thing. No, Mitch. It'll take you out of range of the televiewer and out of my sight. Won't take a couple of minutes. I'll keep talking so you'll know where I am. Do you hear me, Mitch? No. And here I go, walking around. Will you listen to me? No one western side. No different here. No way in from this side that I can see. The fool. He's out of sight now, Jet. Keep quiet, Doc. Listen for him. Now on southern side. Hey. What is it, Mitch? Uh, well, there's one thing about this ship that's the same as ours. What's that? A retractable ladder. And right now the rungs are extended. It's almost like an invitation to go in. Never mind that, Mitch. Keep walking. Just go round. I can see him, Jet. He's walking up the ladder. For heaven's sake, be careful. Uh, can you see him? His head has appeared over the far side. I can see him now. Well, I'll be... Hey, Jet. Yes? I can see right down into it, into the cabin. What's in there? Nothing. What? Nothing. Are you sure? Well, of course I'm sure. There's a circular cabin, flat floor, plain walls, and a ladder leading out of it. I'm going in. Oh, no. Well, I made it. I'm in. It's not quite so empty as I thought. How do you mean? Well, the walls seem to be made of octagonal-shaped panels, each one a slightly different colour from the next. And there are two rows of buttons at the top of each panel. Leave them alone. Don't touch them. You don't think I'm that crazy, do you? Beats me where the crew can be, if it ever had one. How's could it get here? It could be remote controlled. Yeah, I suppose it could, but who by and where from? Search me. Meanwhile, I'll search this cabin. Maybe this is just the airlock or something. The actual living quarters are further inside. Oh, oh no, Doc, listen, it's here. Jet, Jet. What is it, Doc? Oh, the noise, it's here again. We can both hear it this time. So can I. Something's going to happen. It always does. What about Mitch? Hello? 
Hello, Mitch. Mitch, can you hear us? Mitch! He doesn't answer. Doc, you try to raise him. Hello, Mitch. Can you hear me? This is Doc calling. Hello, hello. Hello, Mitch. It's Doc now. Call him again. He should hear us now, Doc. Hello, Mitch. Can you hear us? Uh, Jet's already calling him. Oh, why did he have to go in, that thing? And why doesn't he come out? Hello, Mitch. Hello. Hello, Jet. What's the panic? Didn't you hear us calling you? And didn't you hear the music? It's nothing to be scared of. Hey? I said, it's nothing to be scared of. That's what I thought you said. None of us is going to be hurt. This ship is just different from ours, that's all. Run on an entirely different principle. Its magnetic field upsets the working parts of our ship to a greater or lesser degree according to how much power is being used here. Mitch, what on earth are you talking about? It's all so simple. Look, either come out of there or I'll come over myself. No, Jet, don't. That would be asking for trouble. What do you mean? Stay where you are. Don't attempt to move any closer. What's got into him, Jet? I don't know. Uh, Doc, is the recorder going? Uh, sure, of course it is. Then watch it closely. Take down every word he says. This ship is from another world. Millions of miles away. Hundreds of light years. It's from the other side of the universe. Oh, that's impossible. For anything to travel that far would take thousands of years. Television would seem impossible to an ancient Egyptian. I don't happen to be an ancient Egyptian. And you know as well as I do that flight from such a distance is impossible. You're right. You're not like an ancient Egyptian. A prehistoric man would be a better description. What's the matter with you, Mitch? Time. That's the secret. Journeys through time. Leave here. Shush. Next moment you pop up a thousand years from now. Or back a couple of thousand. Will you please explain what all this is about? Can you explain a geometrical problem to a monkey? You'll just have to take my word for it. What? His crackers. Whatever happened to him in there sent him clean off his rocker. Mitch, listen to me. No. You listen to me. What are you doing here? Where are you from? Doc, what can we do? Talk to him. Keep talking to him. All right, if you think it best. Well... We're from the Earth, but you know that. At first, we thought you might be, but it hardly seemed possible. We decided you must be from some other planet. Eh? Is that a surprise? That there are other people in the universe besides yourself? Well, I suppose it's possible, but... Possible? It... Life is universal. It crops up wherever it is given the slightest chance. Do you think your tiny planet was unique? There are millions of stars with planetary systems. Millions of planets teeming with life. He must be crackless. Mitch is the one fellow who would never say anything like that unless he saw it. A definite proof. Shh, he can hear every word you say. You all find this hard to believe, don't you? Well, it's not that, Mitch, but this is so unlike you. Now you're beginning to understand. What do you mean by that? Why do you interrupt the peace of your sister planet? What is your business here? Surveying. Photographing, the establishment of a lunar base, in time. Not in time. You haven't conquered that yet. How do you mean? You've got a lot to learn. Already you are tearing your own planet to pieces, destroying it. And now you mean to do the same here. Isn't that your intention? If there are minerals here of use to us, we'll dig them out. It is your intention. But if our civilization is to carry on to progress, we need fuel, metal, radioactive materials. The moon appears to have great stores of them. Supplies on Earth can't last forever. One day you will find that they can. What? Watch your step, Earthmen. There are things out here, even on the fringe of space, you don't comprehend. You don't understand. Can't understand that no beings in a three-dimensional world can ever hope to understand. Three dimension? You mean there is another dimension? Hello? Hello, Mitch, can you hear me? Mitch, hello? Hello? I can't understand it. I don't understand it at all. Hello, Mitch! Mitch! Hello, Jet. It's no good, it's beyond me. What is? All these panels and buttons. 
Don't seem to be any doors, nothing. If there is a way further into this ship, it's absolutely undetectable. Mitch, come out of there. Come out? But I've only just this moment got in. Come out, do you hear? I can't leave it now. I... Oh. What's the matter? I don't know. I'm getting out and quick. And here he comes. Down quick. He jumped. Mitch, be careful. Don't run. A lot of notice he's taken of that. Good Lord, Jet. That thing's alive. Alive? How do you mean? Well, it... I, I don't know. It began to vibrate. Is that all? It's enough, isn't it? Jet, look. The dome. It's closing. What? Yes, it is. I got out just in time. Let's get back into the ship quick. Before we all go crazy. I tell you, Jet, I wasn't in there above a minute. I hardly said a word to you, and then I felt the thing come to life, and... That's when I jumped and came running back to you. Doc, you recorded everything, didn't you? Everything. Play it back. Let Mitch hear it. There's nothing I'd like more. You've got me worried. What's the panic? Didn't you hear us calling you? And didn't you hear the music? It's nothing to be scared of. Hey? Truth, is that me? It's your it's voice, isn't it? nothing to be scared of. That's what I thought you said. None of us is going to be hurt. This ship is just different from ours, that's all. Run on an entirely different principle. But I, I never said any of those things. I wasn't in that ship long enough to say half that. But you were, and the recorder's proof of it. Let's, let's listen to it. Let, let me hear it. Mitch, what on earth are you talking about? It's all so simple. Mitch, either come out of there or I'll come over myself. Watch your step, Earthmen. There are things out here, even on the fringe of space. You don't comprehend. You don't understand, can't understand. That no beings in a three-dimensional world can ever hope to understand. Three dimension? You mean there is another dimension? Well, Mitch? It's it's fantastic. It's it's unbelievable. This is Doc's diary all over again. And you, Jet, slipping backwards in time. You know, it all ties up in a peculiar way. Well, how? You go in there and time seems to stand still. We hear your voice over our radio and record it. But so far as you're concerned, you were in and out of that ship in less than a minute. Well, when I went into the crater, the same sort of thing happened to me. I was unaware of time passing. But according to you three, I had disappeared. And I was gone for more than two hours. You know, the whole business does seem to be connected with time in some way. Maybe, but the music Lemmy's been hearing, the stuff I wrote in my diary, how do you tie that up? I don't know, unless they were trying to contact us in some way. If so, they finally succeeded through Mitch. But who are they? What are they? Where did they come from? The other side of the universe, according to you. Or should I say, your voice. Of course, that's it. They're time travellers. Yeah. Time travellers? Yes. It's been known for years that the only way to get to the really distant stars is to travel through time. And that's just what that ship must do. And why couldn't it have arrived a hundred years from now? Or a hundred years ago? Why did they have to pick on the very time when we landed here? Well, they must have been just as surprised to see us as we were to meet up with them. Well, that's why they tried to scare us off, frighten us, put the ship out of action. Well, why should they want to do that? Because they're afraid of us. Hey, What, them? Afraid of us? Well, why not? But they seem to have so much more knowledge, more intelligence, if you like. Well, have they? Or is it just a different kind of knowledge? But if they can travel through time, or whatever that means, they must be vastly superior to us in every way. Let me... Can you fly and find your way instinctively like a homing pigeon? Do I look as though I can? Do you consider the homing pigeon superior to you, then? More intelligent? Just because he can do something you can't do? No, I don't. Well, that's how it might be. Whoever made that ship out there can travel in time. Not because they're necessarily superior to us, but because that's the most natural way for them to carry on. They probably couldn't travel through space if they tried. Oh, well, yes, I see what you mean. I think. <sighs> if only we had their secret. Think of the things we could do. If only we had the oxygen. Think of the time we could stay here. Are we ever going back? No, uh, he's right, Jet. Maybe we've bumped into something that's going to rock modern thought to its foundations, but unless we get word of it back to Earth and quick, it's going to be lost forever. Yes. <clears throat> Lemmy, open up that radio. Call Earth. Tell them we'll be leaving in a few minutes. Tell them we're going back. That's the best bit of news I've heard up to now. Doc, Mitch, start getting ready. Take off in 30 minutes. Well, Doc? Uh, I've rotated the camera three times. There's no sign of it. It must have taken off or done whatever it does to get from one place to another. Well, we're not going out to look for it, that's certain. Stand by to take off. All set? OK. OK. You ready? Gyro. Gyro. We'll keep the motor going until we reach 3,700 miles an hour. Then we'll cut her. Cut her? 
But escape velocity is 5,300. We don't need escape velocity. Not to go into an orbit around the moon. Hey, who said anything about an orbit around the moon? I thought we were going straight back. When we started out on this trip, it was definitely arranged we should circle the moon at least once to see what the other side looked like. It's something scientists have wondered about for centuries. But, Jet, that was if everything was normal. Everything is normal now. The ship's working, isn't she? But for how long? We're going to circle the moon as arranged. Now, stand by for firing. As soon as the correct speed is reached, we'll turn the ship through 90 degrees, increase velocity, and get as close to the surface as we can. Standing by. OK. OK. Firing in 10 seconds. Five, four, three, two, one, contact! Well, doesn't look any different from the other side, does it? Craters, mountains, plains, just the same. I didn't expect it to be all that different. Hey, Chet. Come over here. Look at this. What? Directly below us now. Biggest crater I've ever seen. About twice the size of Copernicus. Yes, I can see it. It's crammed full of little craters. Tiny ones in regular lines. Yes, there's a tendency for craters on the Earth side to form lines of a sort, but not like these. This just can't be natural. I'll say they can't. Those craters are moving. What? Yes, they're <laughs> leaving the ground. They're not craters at all. They're ships. Just like the one that landed near us. Oh, dozens of them. And they're coming up here. They're coming up after us. You've been listening to episode five of Journey into Space with Andrew Folds as Jet Morgan, Alfie Bass as Lemmy, Guy Kingsley Pointer as Doc, and David Williams as Mitch. Other parts were played by David Jacobs. The orchestra was conducted by Van Phillips, who also composed the music. Journey into Space was written and produced for the BBC by Charles Tilton.